So, I happened to be out walking and found this chicken in the woods. We're gonna take a sample, take it home so we can colonize it and attempt indoor fruiting. Here we have our first chicken in the woods sample. We are gonna harvest probably an entire shelf off of this so I can uh, eat some as well. Now, we're gonna take this home, give this a taste test, and inoculate it to some agar. As you can see, the specimen has a really thin leading edge, which I think is just due to environmental factors, but is weird. Now, here in the still air box, we can take our tissue sample and two agar dishes and go ahead and transfer a clean, sterile tissue transfer from inside of our sample to these dishes. We can start this by breaking our clean tissue sample in half and extracting that from the inside. We'll do this with a sterile knife just to make sure everything's clean. You can see a little bit better in this footage that this sample is extremely thin, which I think is either due to high humidity, moisture, or just weird environmental factors that have caused this thin leading edge. But all of the identification still leads to chicken of the woods with white spore prints and this fleshy meaty texture. Regardless, I'm still going to make a sample, clean this up so we can go ahead and try to cultivate this indoors. With these agar dishes, we can make a few agar to agar transfers over the following weeks to make sure after three or four that we have a really clean culture ready to go for cultivation. Of course, the cultivation part of this is going to come with more problems. We'll talk about that later. With these samples done though, we can move them out and move the agar dishes into incubation. Now, it's been about two weeks since we first inoculated these dishes, so we can go ahead and take a look at the contamination that one of them got and the growth on the other. Let's go ahead and move it over here so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Now, taking a look at our dishes, we have our first chicken of the woods, which did get some trichoderma mold in it. The second dish, however, has turned out super clean. They both have this slight orange hue to them, but I'm going to go ahead and clean up some agar to agar transfers with this one, and we'll do that next. Now back in the stale air box, we have our flag sterilized blade, our two chicken in the wood containers, our clean one, and our contaminated. Our contaminated I will not be doing anything with, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a better view of that contamination through here. We can go ahead and set that guy off to the side though. We're going to go ahead and prep all of these containers for that transfer. These are some reusable agar dishes that I have made. Uh, I just used some food container uh, PP5 plastic uh, instead of a lid. That way I can monitor the growth from the top um, with these little mason jars. Um, I do have a ton that aren't modified yet. They're just upside down lids. Um, but so far they've worked. I've run a few cultures out on a few of them, um, but they've been good. Uh, I just am trying to find ways to reduce the plastic waste and uh, be a little bit more sustainable in my practices. But so far these have been good. So let's go ahead and prep all these. For these it's nice, you can just pull the ring lid off. I'm going to set that off to the side. We can repeat the same process with this guy. And likewise with our final. Now 
Now we can prep our dish. Get our blade ready. And go ahead and start by making some transfers. I'm going to flame sterilize this again. Let it cool down for about 10 seconds. And we can make another transfer. And our third and final, sterilize once more. And with the cooled blade, we'll go ahead and make a transfer from over here. Beautiful. Now all three of these guys are good to be labeled and moved into incubation. And there we have it. We transferred that healthy agar to three more dishes to continue to expand our culture and get more clean results. Eventually we'll create a liquid culture with this and move on to indoor cultivation. Now cultivating chicken in the woods comes with unique challenges. It's a wood loving mushroom that grows in hardwood trees making its natural environment really hard to replicate indoors. The mycelium also develops really slowly, which can make it a battle to fight contamination while we're letting the mycelium establish its network. And most importantly, its triggering conditions aren't really fully understood, so we don't really know what triggers the mycelium to actually produce the fruiting bodies. So for now, this is going to be more of an experimental process to hopefully delve into that further and understand this mushroom. But I'm hoping with the right substrate, a lot of patience, and good sterile techniques will be able to achieve some sort of results. It's a fascinating challenge for dedicated growers and that wraps this up from collecting it out in the wild to moving it to agar. I'm hoping that we can develop some unique techniques that will work to trigger fruiting indoors. If you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know down below as I'm more than open to experimenting with different ways to hopefully induce fruiting on these mushrooms. Until next time, happy cultivating fungi fanatics. Thank you very much for joining us today though, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.